All right, everyone. So let me begin today by welcoming our guest, Damon Levensky. Uh, he's had a He's lived a life as an MDM student and now as an MDM alum, um, having worked for a number of production studios on some very impressive um, productions. I've listed them off from sausage parties to a series of unfortunate events, Black Panther, Infinity Wars, uh, Detective Pikachu, Aquaman. Uh, he's definitely touched a number of projects that many of you have heard of. Um, today, he's really gonna talk about where the production time management fits into this uh, crazy world of post visual effects and post MDM life. Um, but with that, uh, let's uh, give a virtual welcome to Damon and Damon, we'll, we'll go with some Q&A later on. Thanks again, everyone. Damon, over to you. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dennis, for such a wonderful introduction. It's, uh, it's always an honor. Um, yeah, so let's get straight uh, to it. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about production and time management and, um, and my experiences uh, throughout the years. Uh, and as a student, as a, as a professional, as a freelance artist, and um, hopefully it will help you guys uh, in your studies, in your day-to-day -day, uh, life. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so let me talk about myself a bit because it's always fun talking about yourself. Um, excuse me. Um, so uh, I'm a 3D artist. I've been working in the visual effects here in Vancouver for six years. Basically uh, finished my uh, degree at the CDM and went to work on Sausage Party uh, at a small studio uh, at the time was called Nitrogen, now they called Cinecite. Um, I worked on a project that was pretty much a messy project uh, and I had to find my way around um, the amount of tasks and broken in pipeline and just, just things I've never needed to deal with pr prior to my prof professional life. Um, and the first shocking thing that I noticed as I came out of the CDN that I went into uh, a structured uh, company is that I, would, I thought I would get to use all my new agile skills, but here I was, you know, a small cog in a, in a big uh, machine, and I had to kind of figure out how to get my, my tasks done, the, um, ideas out to uh, my supervisors. And I started to use a lot of the tools that I got at the CDM uh, to help me do just that, uh, especially the time management side. Um, I have been a 3D artist for over 20 years. I worked in Israel's um, TV industry, ad industry, and um, um, I got a small brain freeze. Wait a minute, it's gonna come. Uh, tech industry. Uh, I did everything there from you know just simple advertisements, having like a, a disc turnaround, to uh, full-fledged medical simulations. Uh, I did stereoscopy, um, military um, uh, simulations, where I was I would show off how certain. Uh, top secret uh, um, tanks or rockets would work, and that's how we'd get you know money and funding for those for those things. Um, my education was basically I'm a graduate of the Academy of Arts and Design in Jerusalem. That's where I got my bachelor's degree. It's a four-year um, study where basically I was taught to be a director of animation. <clears throat> um, and then several years later, I came to the Center for Digital Media. And as of next week, uh, next week, last week, I became a Canadian citizen, hooray, because uh, I loved it so much here, I decided to stay. So, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in the chat. Hi, hi, hi. Shalom. <laughs> Um, 
so that's me in a nutshell. Um, let's have a, a look at what we're going to talk about today. So um, firstly, I did um, some prep for this uh, talk. And I would like to send you to a website that I got a lot of the information from that has been very helpful for me to explain a lot of this stuff. But I think it, it's, a, it's a great asset. And it's called clockify.me. Uh, the link is down here below. I'll throw that into the chat a little later. Um, please check it out. It's, it's worth a read. It will give you a lot of good tools to, to you know, help you out. Uh, I chose three personas that I would like to kind of cover within this talk. Uh, it's this, the student, the employee, and the self-employed. Uh, each one of these have their own unique uh, challenges. Uh, two, of, two of them are pretty similar, but, um, but they still have uh, small quirks and I'd like to give you guys um, <clears throat> like to give you guys a, a kind of heads up on what to look out for uh, to my experiences. Um, and that's it so far. Do you guys have any questions that you would like to ask me? Wow, very quiet. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. That means I must be good at my job. All right, here we go. Um, so these are the tools I use on a daily basis to help me keep on track and keep my, uh, my distractions away. Um, first and foremost, I use Google Calendar and my Gmail to keep on uh, just knowing what I need to do or if I have a client, um, what they need. The Google Calendar is one of the most important tools in my uh, toolkit. If you're using Outlook, that's fine too. Um, the reason I'm, I'm stressing on the Google Calendar is because um, if you don't look at your calendar at least twice or three times a day, especially when you're studying, it's, uh, it might be an issue. Um, if Once you go out into the real world, those of you who haven't worked outside of study yet, um, just keeping track of your meetings, of important dates, is, uh, is essential for your day-to-day -day, um, management. So I'll get into that a lot more later, but Google Calendar, a must use. Uh, and then I have some project management and uh, task management tools that are free and online. Those of you who haven't used these before, uh, mondays.com is a project management tool set. I could demonstrate it later if you guys are interested. Um, it, it, it basically, what it does, it, you break down the tasks you need and you put uh, the dates that you need those tasks done and then you just go by what you need. Oh, I'm getting massively nervous. I'm really sorry. Whew. Let's take a deep breath here. Calm down. All right. So. Trello. Trello is your sprint board. Uh, those of you, yeah, are you there? <laughs> I'm here. I know. I was just giving you a breather, Damon, because I was going to say, you know what, this is the one thing I actually really love about anyone who gives a presentation is that, you know, we're all human. And it's, uh, yeah. it's funny, this, um, you know, whether we're in a classroom or, you know, in a Zoom window, you know, it's, uh, it can feel awkward at times, but you're not alone. I mean, th this is a room full of your peers. And, uh, you know, again, it's super appreciated. But I wanted to give you a breather in case you wanted to have a little sip of water or figure things out. Um, Josh was yeah. also apologizing. He had a technical uh, issue, um, yeah. but I think he's back uh, back online now too. So I was giving him a window too. But um, yeah, for everyone, I mean, this is this is actually, again, a teaching moment. Damon, you've been a teacher for many years as well. So yeah. it's, you're not just- This is always different in teaching because um, you kind of, even if, even though that this is virtual, I still feel like I'm in the room talking yeah. to a bunch of people looking at me. And I have terrible uh, yeah. stage fright. Uh, yeah. This is something I had to deal with in the CDM, and I'm sure you guys already dealt with it. 
Oh yeah, no, and, and you know what? But, I love yeah. this too because I mean, everyone who's on this call has met Patrick, and Patrick, I mean, to me, he represents the you know the true extrovert who can do anything. But there's so many of us in this industry that come at it with that introvert perspective. I'm one of them. When I was a kid, I, I was afraid to like order a pizza or call a radio station to to request a song. Like I was that much of a shy shy kid, and. You know, Those of you who don't know what a radio station is. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm creating myself here, but um, yeah. yeah, no, and it's uh, but yeah, this is you know this is again like I I, I love these moments because it's like you know I, I I think I've I appreciate the the, the talks when you know we, we actually connect with whether it's you know I should be showing my 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 second bedroom here too, but it's in such chaos I had to create my own virtual stage so that I can keep my sanity. But I mean you know we're all living in this unique world now where we have to, you know, go through these screens. And if you have that added nervousness of presenting or speaking, you know, it can, it can be a challenge, but you're not alone. I just wanted to come on camera, let you catch up. And uh, I'm also seeing all the comments here. So I think you're not alone in that, uh, you know, the nervousness space, but. Uh, oh yeah, I know this will pass in a few minutes when yeah, you know, we actually you start com having uh, more conversation and yeah. you know, not just throwing data at you guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and yeah. You know, this is this is so appreciated. I mean, tools on trying to manage your production, your time, your balance. I mean, they're all dealing with, you know, we'll say multiple chat tools that you have to kind of keep aware of and things. But yeah, I, I find the same thing. If I'm not, you know, living by my calendar and, and having my routine for a check it at specific points, um, you know, it's your day can get lost. But your advice so far has been spot on. I'm going to go back off camera and let it focus back on you. <laughs> But wanted to All say right. thanks. Well, totally get well it. thanks for the oh, breather. <laughs> All right. See you, Damon. I'll be, I'm right yeah. here, though. All right, guys. Um, yeah, so back to Trello. Those of you who haven't used Trello yet, uh, Trello is basically a sprint board. Um, if you have been using sticky notes, it's exactly the same. Um, just a, a digital version of it. Um, again, those of you who are interested and want me to show it off, I will. Um, and then I use Slack. Slack is a wonderful uh, chatting tool, um, which basically uh, clears out all the chatter that uh, from, let's say, fa Facebook. Uh, when I was at uh, the CDM, we were using Facebook a lot, and I hated every single minute of it uh, with using Facebook. Um, Slack is way better for, for this kind of use. Um, mainly because it stays uh, project focused and the alerts that you get uh, from it aren't as invasive as Facebook. And I'll talk about a lot um, with the different issues that, um, that you get from the, the digital media around you. <sighs> that being said, let's move on to um, time management skills and um, and what you guys should realize what those are. So um, I'm not going to read all of this. I just want you to um, take this in. Um, these nine skills, if you uh, keep them in mind when you are working on your day-to-day -day, um, scheduling or actual workflow, uh, will help you immensely uh, guide you through and keep you um, on time and less stressed out and so on. So let me just go through them quickly. Um, uh, again, let me take a breather. I don't know why I'm so nervous. I shouldn't be nervous by now. <sighs> so here we go. Uh, setting smart goals, uh, effective planning, uh, stress management, I'm in stress. Yeah, uh, that for students is basically one of the, the, big, the big things is managing your stress. Uh, poor task delegation, um, avoiding uh, distractions. I'm gonna talk a lot about that because it's a, probably one of the biggest issues in any one of the personas that I, um, that showed before. Um, single tasking, saying no, uh, uh, setting your priorities and um, uh, battling procrastination. Uh, all of you know what procrastination is? 
because I know some of you aren't English speakers, so procrastination means to put things off to the last minute. Oh, yeah, we got some yes. Um, all right, so these are the things that you need to um, bear in mind and, and have skills at to, to get, um, basically have good time management skills. Been there, yes, all right. I'm just going over the, the chat for a second. Let's see what we got. All right, all right, there's some good stuff here. Cello is, yep, 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 all right. Cool, guys. All right, <clears throat> so let's jump in and talk about um, students. So students kind of have their unique problem uh, is that you're usually not working on one project and you, even though you have a set schedule and you know when things must be are due and when things must be done, um, understanding uh, the complexity of a project or complexity of uh, what you need to do may be overwhelming. Um, for, for basically, I broke it up into the, the four, four things. I wrote three, but it's actually four things uh, that you bear in mind when, when you come to break down a task or a project. Um, scope, how big and how complex something is. Uh, I, I broke, broke, broke it down in the text underneath. Uh, resources, uh, again, uh, what I need to complete the task. Uh, skill level, um, as a professional, you usually know what your skill level is, but sometimes you are presented with something that you are not proficient in and knowing um, that level that you're in and if you need help or uh, additional uh, study time uh, that you need to allocate to learn and to get yourself up to a skill level, that is something that you've got to bear in mind when you are uh, trying to break down your time uh, and importance, and the importance of which project, which um, task in front of you, you need to um, delegate between. So if, if you know the importance of a task, you will do that one first or last or middle or, or hand it off to someone else to deal with. Does that make sense to everyone? Uh, yep, 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 yes, 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 good, excellent. Does this help? <laughs> All right. All right, so these are the, the few things that I've noticed that students struggle with, and as a student, I struggled with. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I'm sure that you guys have more. But uh, these are the main ones that I've noticed. So more than one project at hand, uh, importance of the task, saying no, uh, separating your uh, personal lives and school lives, and in big and red, distractions. Uh, all right, so to kind of give you an idea of um, how these come into play in everyday in, in everyday life of a student. I thought I'd tell you a story about one of my projects when I was uh, getting my BA. Um, imagine you guys are at your, it's the last year to graduate, you need to produce a film. The, uh, we have strict rules for the film. That means you have to have between one and two characters. Um, I could have done my final film, uh, 2D or 2D animation, a 3D animation or a stop motion animation. Um, the requirement was if I did a 3D animation film, uh, uh, I needed to pick a teammate because the scope of the, of the film might be too big for just one person. 
uh, and it, it's, same went for um, stop motion. 2D could, you know, you could basically deal with it. One person can deal with the amount of work um, a little better than with CG and um, stop motion. So here I am, I have these parameters and I write a short story. I realized that um, I'm, I'm very dyslexic, so writing the script will be very hard for me. So I went to a friend of mine and said, hey, how about we do this project together? It's 3D, I need a teammate anyway. Let's do it. He wrote the script, he wanted to direct, I wanted to be director of animation and I wanted to learn how to do production side of things. Um, so we got started and, and we were working on um, breaking down tasks and everything we need to do when we realized that we needed somebody to do the art direction because both of us, um, as good as artists as we are, art direction is not our strongest suit. Um, so there was another person who was looking for a team and decided to join our team. So now we have three in our team and they were tasked uh, uh, with, the, um, with, the art with the style of the movie and the art direction. And the condition they gave us to join in is to bring a friend who wants to just do animation and do some of the technical side. So here we are, we, 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 a team of four, we're already, um, our team has grown uh, more than what the requirement said, but we got the approval of the teachers and we, when we presented the script, they said, okay, um, this script can work with four people. The thing that I didn't take into account as the production management guy was, that in um, a school, in a school environment, if something goes wrong um, with one of the one of the participants, uh, you cannot get rid of them. You cannot, you know, say, "Oh, you can't work with us anymore." And the reason is is that they students too. They're there to make mistakes, just like any other student. So. A couple of things started to go wrong quite early in our, in our production. Uh, firstly, we miscalculated the scope of the project. Um, we were tasked with a, a movie that was supposed to be maximum three minutes, and it pretty much qu uh, quickly grew up to a seven, uh, expanded to be a seven minute film, which is, for students, it's an immense job. Uh, and it happened because of a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, it started off with something called buy-in. So buy-in is when um, several of the students um, have other priorities other than the project they have. Um, so for example, if you guys are working on project one, but you're having more fun, let's say in game design and you decide to put more effort into game design than in projects one, your buy-in is not in projects one, but in game design. So this basically creates conflict within a team. And this is how uh, some of the project management and the size of the project started to go wrong. Um, our art director who got a job at a company in pretty early in our project and didn't communicate to us that that's what happened, started to not do the work and, and manage her time very poorly. Uh, mainly what would happen is that we would have a deadline, a checkpoint where we needed to, to reach and we wouldn't have the design done on time. So, this started a cascading effect throughout the project for everyone um, to try catch up. That means that what now is starting to happen is because that this person is not doing their bit, uh, we started taking more and more stuff on ourselves. So between the next three uh, people, we started to take some of their responsibilities on us, which 
this goes into task delegation. Um, when do you say, no, I got too much on my plate and delegate that out? Uh, we didn't. We didn't communicate that we were having trouble and that we were taking too much, which brought up our stress level. The minute we got stressed, we got mean to each other and this started to create a breakdown in the community, more breakdown in the communication and just an overall, a not good feeling uh, within the project. So this is a cascading effect that happens because of bad time management, bad project management, and just several things that we should have done better. Now, again, we are all students. We didn't know what we were doing um, and we didn't communicate to our teachers um, the problems that we were having. We just, you know, we, we soldiered on, we were gonna do the best movie we could but these things started to, to pile up, eventually bringing to a breaking point where we wanted to quote unquote fire the person who was doing their work, but we couldn't because they were student. So now we stuck with the person who won't do the work properly or would do the minimum amount and then you know more falls on us. Now this also caused other issues like morale problems. Um, the person who uh, joined the team um, to do animation and do some technical stuff, had trouble with the technical stuff and lost all interest in it because the minute the, the group wasn't in a good morale, they lost all confidence in themselves and, and in the project and then started to delegate their technical skills out. And this is kind of like a cascading thing that could happen when you don't work together and don't have open communication. Um, and, that, and that's a, a good example of how a project can be totally derailed because of not keeping good time management and project management. Dennis, do you want to Yeah, I did. I, well, was, it, I think the timing of your production time management workshop is great now too, because as you were addressing, I know a bunch of them, they're stepping into the projects one assignments. And mm -hmm. this is a common story. I think everyone who's had to live that team experience and, you know, not everyone equally carrying their weight or the, the impact it can have on, you know, everyone's morale around a project or enthusiasm whenever, you know, but um, I'm hoping in this too. So it's one thing as far as some of the things you can do to address it. But what I was hoping you can also touch on is with the, benefit of hindsight, you know, are there things that you can advise our C-15s on as things they can do to ensure that that equal buy-in commitment, whether it's like, I know we talk about project charters and that later on, or teams, you know, getting on board, like what, what would you recommend to them as they're setting off on these projects um, as a way to get in front of these issues um, as part of the planning process? But anyway, I just wanted to give you a breather. If you needed a sip of water, this is what I'm popping in here for, but I also- There we go. Yeah, exactly. The aha moment of, you know what, the project time management for students, these stories, I mean, everyone's lived it. It's like, we've not had a cohort go by where there's, you know, one project team or, or another that isn't struggling at one point. Um, everyone has life and all these other, you know, complications going on and, um, you know, totally get the separation between personal lives and home life right now, too, is a challenge for people. Um, but so the timing of your production time workshop right now, super appreciated the story, the use case, you know, this idea that it does happen, super practical, but now I'm just hoping you'll reflect on, you know, what are some of the, you know, things you wish you would have done or things that you can envision that can help. Um, anyway, yeah. I'm, water. I'm gonna go back off into the distance. All right, so, um, All right. thank you. Camera here, gone. <laughs> hey, he's gone. <laughs> well, as Dennis said, um, the takeaways from, from, this, uh, from this experience. Well, the first thing is that I could tell you guys is learning to say no. Um, once you realize what your priorities are um, and, and realize how much work you have on your plate, telling somebody, look, I'm, my schedule is too full and I, I'm really stressed out. I cannot take another, another task on hand is very important. Um, the more transparent you are with your teammates, 
about where you are and how much stress you under and how much work you were doing. Um, it helps the whole team. Uh, now, it's, it's also very important to bear in mind that it mustn't turn into a competition. Oh, I'm doing more than you, so come on, do, do more. Um, it's not. Uh, some people can't deal with more uh, than two or three tasks at a time. Some people can deal with six, seven, eight tasks at a time. Um, it's, it's really an individual thing. So saying no to, hey, look, I just can't deal with this right now. Let me finish the task I have at hand, and then I will be able to do it. That will really help. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing um, is your own personal time management is very, very important. Um, have a real uh, set in stone times for your private life and for organizing your time. That means for me, for example, when I was at school, um, I, my wife would work night shifts, so I wouldn't see her until a half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the evening. Um, so that, that half an hour that I had with my wife I made sure that my teammates knew that not to contact me, not to talk to me, because I want to spend time with my, my partner. So that was very important. Um, we also, as a team, we made a decision that one day a week we are not engaged in um, the project we are working on, so we can all work on something else or have time for ourselves to, to unwind. Um, you are in a very... Uh, th your projects will get quite stressful if you like it or not, because it, it is a little bit of a pressure cooker, especially at the end of term. And managing your time better will alleviate some of that pressure, but it is there. So the minute you have a very set time where you know that you come in in the morning 15 minutes early to a, um, to a meeting, just so you can go over your emails, your your task for today, make notes of, you know, questions you have, stuff like that. It really, really helps later and it helps your team as well, as well as yourself. Because if people know that, we, you know, at seven o'clock, between seven and 7.30, you are busy reading your emails and not to disturb you while you're doing that, it really helps everyone. Uh, wanted to make another point. Is there any questions in regards to what I've said so far? Radio signs. Okay. Um, do, do, I want to just talk about that. Uh, importance of tasks. Uh, uh, good points. Okay. Um, importance of tasks is um, a skill that you will eventually get, but um, I will talk about that a little more when I, when I go through the different techniques that you guys can use. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is talk about uh, distractions and that pretty much leads me into um, the employee um, uh, persona uh, because it kind of um, affects both. It actually affects all things. It, it affects your life more than you can think of. And the first thing I want to talk about is the worst thing in the world is this little device. This is our biggest distraction. Um, if you want to just see, sorry, if you wanted to see how distracting this thing is, uh, every time you look at your phone and throughout my t uh, talk, just write a little line on your page and just see how many times you, you've done that. Um, these things have been designed to distract us. Uh, that's, that's the main purpose. Um, if it's Facebook saying, hey, hey, look at me, or TikTok, or I don't know, um, Instagram, all of those things are fighting for your attention. 
<clears throat> so um, a couple of things that you should do is firstly turn off your notifications on your phone and everything. Um, here's a story. Um, my last job, uh, I was working on uh, Invincible. You could see the poster up. Uh, Invincible is um, just a, a quick recap on this. It's a, it's a comic, uh, same guy who wrote uh, The Walking Dead. Um, I worked at Winston Sky as a layout artist. Uh, it's a 2D uh, series that's going to come out soon. I don't know when, on Amazon Prime. Um, but we were a small team. We were a team of five, the pro uh, producer, myself, uh, a, a guy who was, uh, I was doing layout. We had a guy doing crowds. Uh, we had our technical director and our uh, look dev um, and uh, effects artist. So that's the entire team. And we are doing the whole CG side of the 2D, uh, 2D um, episodic uh, TV series. Um, but because we were in such a, a cramped space, uh, quite quickly it became apparent that, um, that we, we needed to come up with some uh, rules of engagement. Uh, for example, you know, if, if we had the headphones on and we were listening to music, uh, it was very hard to communicate with us. Um, if uh, sometimes uh, we would take off our headphones and walk away from the table and not turn off the music, it would make up you know, it becomes very loud and distracting for the other, other people uh, nearby. Um, just asking each other questions, uh, especially if somebody's really trying to concentrate. Um, the technical director, he was working on a lot of the tools and coding and our, we found ourselves, you know, turning to each other and asking questions immediately instead of checking to see if it's okay to ask a question because they might be in the middle of something. Um, and many other like fidgeting or tapping, stuff like that. That's, it could get very annoying when you're sitting in a, in a small cramped area, especially when, when pressure goes up. So we had a meeting and, and we came up with a couple of, of solutions to, to combat these these uh, be all behaviors or communication uh, breakdowns. And the first thing that we did was um, we try to keep as quiet as we can. If we, uh, if we put our headphones down, we had to turn down the volume or turn off the music. Um, we were only supposed to put on headphones if, um, if we were working on something and we didn't want to be disturbed, that means the minute the headphones are on, don't disturb. And, and the only way to communicate was through Slack, um, if you wanted to ask something. And, and that also went to turning around the shoulder and asking a person behind you what you want, because that could be very distracting. And this comes to basic distractions. Um, distractions uh, can come in many forms from, you know, the phones going off and, and beeping every two seconds because, uh, for example, I had uh, uh, a WhatsApp group that around about eight o'clock in the morning, they would start chatting and all my phone would do was playing, 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 and it would become annoying, it would become annoying for me. So the rule was everybody turn off the notifications or your phone while we at work. Questions? Okay. Um, yeah, so um, my suggestion to you is when you guys are working on whatever you're working, uh, if you have um, your email, uh, let's say your Gmail open, close the browser. Just close it, don't have it. Facebook, closed. Phone notification, closed. When you're working on what you're working, um, you shouldn't be looking at anything else but that. Um, I also suggest uh, taking five minutes, put your phone down, take five minutes uh, in a quiet room and let your mind clear itself. What, what that will do, it's kind of like a meditation, um, will take away that, uh, the urge 
to look at your phone. Um, we are all addicted to this terrible thing. And if you don't think you are, you are. Uh, just notice how many times you have the urge to look at your phone, especially when you hear a sound come from it. Um, really, it is important that you take that time and keep your mind clear. Uh, what I do a lot of times is I, uh, if I need to get from one point to the next, so let's say from one, let's say from uh, the CDM and go get food and come back, I won't put headphones and listen to music. I'll just let my, my keep like a quiet time that my, my mind sort itself out and quiet itself down. Um, especially uh, with uh, those of you who have uh, attention deficit disorder or any kind of learning disability, this is a very important step to take in your day. Yeah, having your home at, at your phone at home uh, takes away that distraction. Uh, even, you know, when you guys are sitting with your laptops and I've, I've seen this, you know, at CDM, I've seen it with my students when I teach Maya, um, you know, they will sit and be on chat rooms and chatting away while I'm talking. And it's, firstly, it's disrespectful for the teacher if you do that and your other, um, your other teammates because you basically are not with them. You're talking to someone else. Okay. <laughs> um, does that make sense to anybody? All right. Okay, cool. Uh, and there was one last thing I wanted to mention. Probably come back to me in a minute. Oh, um, tardiness. Um, tardiness is also something that's uh, a result of um, just poor time management. Um, those of you who have really issues getting to a place on time. Um, I had a, um, a boss once who was adamant that even though our day started at say at eight o'clock, if you weren't at the workplace at 7.45, you were late. That was considered late. And the reason is that if, if you are in time to whatever is happening in the room, firstly, you're respecting the other people who made it in time. Uh, you're respecting um, your client if they come to a meeting, you're respecting your other teammates, uh, and you can get stuff started on time. Uh, especially if you guys are doing scrum in the morning and you have somebody walk in in the middle of scrum, it breaks the flow of Scrum. A, they didn't hear the people before them. And secondly, you're going to now have to repeat everything, making the scrum, so, scrum instead of 15 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes, breaking the time management of that meeting of the day. Yeah, being on time is important. Thank you, Dennis. <coughs> so really, tardiness, um, just don't do it. And, and, and if you... Um, if you really have time, you have trouble struggling getting to a meeting on time, um, have your team know about it. Have somebody come and call you. Uh, set your uh, aim to come an hour earlier so when you're late, you're actually there on time. Stuff like that. There's, there's many ways of dealing with your time management in, in that way. Um, yeah. All right, so let's move on to employees. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, the only difference with employers, like working for an employer and uh, being at school, is that uh, you're just working on one project. And more or less, um, the projects that you are working on um, have a very uh, strict time management that is not up to you. Uh, the only thing that you really need to work on is your personal time management. And this where a tool, this is where a tool like uh, Trello and your calendar will come into, into play. Um, so these are the things that I struggled with as an employee. 
uh, importance of uh, task importance, email organization, distractions we just talked about, uh, separating my uh, personal life and work life, uh, where do I get uh, direction and feedback? Um, so these, um, the things that uh, work in your favor is that uh, you have online tools, uh, if they let you use them, and you have direct access to, um, to the schedule, as well as, of course, your supervisors and so on to, for help. Um, does that make sense? Or do you guys see anything that could be added to this? I would be happy to know. Yeah. Okay, so this must be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty uh, self-explanatory then. All right, so um, task importance, um, you can usually find out from your supervisor which tasks you, they would like you to do first. Uh, but sometimes uh, some of these tasks are way bigger than, than you actually figure out when you get the tasks. I'll give you an example. Um, when I was working on Detective Pikachu, I had a shot where uh, Pikachu is lifting up a cup and he's ducking under um, a sort of uh, ribbon and his tail kind of brushes, brushes the ribbon as he's walking through, through the room. Um, so the task was broken down into several parts. The, the first simulation, the tail simulation, and the, and the rope simulation. And I needed to kind of figure out which one of the simulations I needed to do first to um, A, get the feedback I needed, B, to figure out which one of these were gonna be the more um, technically challenging out of the, out of the three simulations. Uh, and once I figured out, okay, if I do the first, fur first, which is the easy bit, I could cash it out and will be done within a few hours and I'll get feedback on that pretty quickly. And uh, it's pretty much was a plug and play thing. I knew that that would be the least amount of work. Um, so I could do that last. Um, the more important uh, element in the scene was the tail rope interaction. Now, the way that the, the it was set up that I, that I didn't really have, let's say, fur touching a, a rope and moving. I had a piece of, a block touching a piece of rope and I had to animate that first and then add the fur on top of that to react to whatever was reacting. So that means I had to do the simulation of the rope first, get that right, then I can and improve that and then I could do the final pass, which would be um, the tail itself, and then I can play around with the rope, its height and depth. So as it's reacting, it's also creating some wrinkles and stuff within the fur. Um, so once I understood like the 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 complexity of the shot, um, I understood the importance of what I needed to do first. And just sitting down with a piece of paper and pen, writing it down, I need to do A, B, C, D, E, and then going to Trello, breaking up the work and starting just to move my sticky notes over and over until I got the task done. Um, so that, that's an example of like how I went and broke down my tasks. Now, uh, things I did wrong. Um, I tend to get very excited when I've done something that I like but it tends to backfire at me quite a lot because I tend to run to my supervisor and say, you got to see this, it's amazing. And then they look at it and say, mm, that's fine, but do so-and-so. And then I do a little tweak and come back, you got to see it, it's so amazing. And then I say, mm, do so-and-so. But after like an hour, it gets annoying for them because they need to leave what they're doing and I'm distracting them from what they're doing because every 10 minutes I'm calling them over to see because I'm excited, I love what I've done but it's not good for them. So my suggestion, I learned this very quickly, was take the note and notepad and do, a sim do your task, and especially if you need feedback on it, do your task, do several versions of the task, uh, write down notes of things that you think are great, what you think doesn't work, what thing you think could be done better, and then 
when you've done enough of this and enough time has gone by, you can go to your supervisor and then say, hey, these are the things and have it break down. And then they will give you a little more time and give you more feedback and, and it will be a more productive than just calling them over to see something and then you know, they'll burst your bubble or get annoyed of being distracted every 10 minutes. The same goes for if you're getting stuck with a problem. Uh, I've had many a time when I first started doing CG and I had a, a more experienced CG guy sitting next to me and I would go and do an operation and it wouldn't work and do a different operation, it wouldn't work. But instead of taking the time and reading and how to fix it or, or doing a f more than just two tests, I would immediately turn over and ask them, hey, how to, how to do this? Um, after a while, it becomes really annoying to the person you, you're doing that. So the thing I learned to do was, all right, I got a problem. Let me do a few steps. I wrote down the few steps I did. Uh, I took notes on where the thing I was having a problem and, and only after having at least two or three problems that I couldn't figure out, I would go to the guy and say, look, these are the problems I'm having. Um, can you spare five minutes and try walk me through it? Uh, or maybe give it, have a different perspective because I don't know where I'm, I'm going wrong. I've looked at this too long. Uh, this is a much better um, way to manage your time and manage uh, your interaction with your supervisor. So it's an it's a, it's a important step to take uh, to manage your time. Rush, do you want to ask that so everybody can hear it? Turn on your microphone and ask that again. Rasha, Rosha, that's how you spell it. Uh, Rosha C. I hope I'm I'm not butchering your name. I'll take a stab here, Damon, because. Uh, yeah like she's having a, a mic related issue, but it's a good yeah. question. So has it ever happened to you that your, ta your personal task importance hierarchy is different than what your supervisor's task lo list looks like? How do you deal with that situation? So your approach competing with how maybe your supervisor um, asked me. Yeah. It's, well, it, the, the approach is that it, it, it will happen. Let's, let's put it this way. Um, the way to deal with it is um, present why you've chosen to do the tasks the way you have, uh, because your supervisor may need the reason they chose the task uh, the way that they want uh, because of deadlines. So if they need a certain task that you think might be easier and left for later, um, done later, but they need it tomorrow, you might as well do what they need. The supervisor at the end of the day is king and you just got to do what they ask you to do. Um, but if you can, if you can defend your, your time management uh, well enough, they will say, okay, I will give you more time on, on so-and-so because A, B, and C. You just got to, you just got to uh, communicate uh, why you've chosen your task manage your task differently than that, what they want. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. All right. Uh, have you had a situation like that before? And um, not, I mean, not working, but at, at the CDM when I'm a C14, I'm not a C15. <laughs> so um, um, there have been instances where I was managing a team and I thought, um, that the hierarchy that some people were using wasn't the most effective one. And then uh, it turned into like, not an argument, but we had to discuss. And I feel like you, as you were saying before, because we are all students. So being in a management position at CDM, when you're a student is a bit tricky because you are the same as your peers. So you don't really have that supervisor's, I would say authority. So it kind of drags the work, and I was just—I was just wondering. Yeah. So you're right. It—it it, it is a problem because um, you don't. 
you're the authority with no authority. Yeah, and exactly. It, 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 yeah. Um, and this is also due to how, how the team decides to, to deal with, you know, the responsibilities of each one, yeah, of yeah. each person. Um, the, what, you re, what you guys really need to realize, um, especially in a, in a school um, setting, is that when, when you guys decide if somebody's going to be the project manager, um, they have an overall view that you might not have. So uh, good communication is just my overall, my overall um, go-to here. Um, you, just, you guys got to communicate what's working and what's not working. Uh, it's important not to have a, a bun overabundance of meetings, but when you do have a meetings, have a very structured meeting. Um, for example, um, if you have six meetings a day, uh, that, that's already hurting pr production. It's, it's, hur it's hurting how things are going to go along. Uh, but if you have three meetings a day, uh, if you can structure the meeting in such a way that you first attack tackling where things are, then what the problems are, and then what the goals are at the end of the day, and opening, um, opening the floor for people to say, okay, my, I have time for so-and-so, uh, this, is, this is how I can uh, effectively do my tasks. Um, and you say, okay, that's great, but I really need this task done by Monday. Uh, at least as a communication is a, a, a to and fro, but it's, uh, it's, it's organized into, into smaller, smaller tasks. Sorry, it takes me a little time to read. I'm very dyslectic, so just bear with me here for a sec. Um, uh, okay. Uh, this one's also a good one, the CG one. Can you... Um, Chime in and just repeat what you asked on the on the chat. Are you okay there with the mic? Um, hi. Yeah. Okay, so uh, from my experience, I have mainly worked uh, with uh, clients uh, that are not aware of the CG techniques that we use. Mm -hmm. So in that case. Uh, when the client asks you to do something in in a sequence that they uh, think is right, uh, it usually doesn't work out that way uh, because there uh, well there might be some problems uh, with the sequence. And instead of fixing that later on, you could uh, propose your own method and uh, work smarter that way. Uh, I'm not totally following you but um from what i understand let me just try to iterate and then you can you can uh correct me if i'm wrong uh okay. from what i understand you are saying is that uh in the cg <clears throat> when you're working in front of a client the client might have a different opinion on how he wants the sequence to go and it usually doesn't work out oh and, well when, uh, when i say sequence i mean uh the workflow Okay. Uh, so the client might say first you build build the walls and then then you add the skirtings and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you might have a different approach. Uh, well, to give an example, uh, first you shape, first you create the shapes uh, of, of the, well, using the line tool in 3D Max, mm -hmm. uh, it, it can, be it can be changed into into a meshes for skirtings so, so you don't have to <clears throat> so simplifying what you're saying is like you yeah, create yeah, a, yeah. you create like a gray box to to get a buy off and then um yeah i'm i'm going to talk about that in a minute when we get to the self employed but on kind of to answer your question uh if you have a, a when you come to your client and say to them uh, that they come with their offer 
of, hey, can you uh, build me, I don't know, um, a, a, a simulation of my office and they give you the plans. What you will do is, first you will, you will have check-in points and saying, these are the, the, the points where um, we have to agree on certain things, otherwise we can't move forward. And then you pretty much lay out your, your work plan. Say, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very rough gray um, build so you can get an idea of the space and what you will see through the camera. Then you will say, the next step is I'm going to make it beautiful, basically texture it and model it. And so, yes. and, and I'll show you the next steps after that. Once you approve these, then we can go ahead and do the next step, which is the camera movement, animation, uh, lighting, and all of that until you get to the end process. But if you lay it out from them from the beginning to end and saying, this is what I'm going to show you. This is what you're hiring me for. This is, you know, I'm a professional. Um, mm -hmm. I, it will take away that kind of interaction that you're talking about, at least from my experience. Does yes, that help? Yes. Yes, you're right. Okay, thanks. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So uh, the last thing I want to talk about here, and we'll move on to professional uh, professionals because it's been brought up, is email organization. Um, this is a very important thing to do uh, in your personal lives uh, as well as at work. But I found this to be one of the bigger things that that I struggled with when I first started to work in a, in a big company because you are bombarded with thousands of emails a day. And keeping your emails organized is essential. So um, I, I'll explain how to do that a little later when I go through like the, the techniques itself. But um, take, firstly, taking the time in the morning um, to read your emails is a big thing. Just do that in the morning and the important ones. Breaking up your folders of your, of your, of your emails into uh, need to read right now, could read later, uh, not important, and please send to the trash um, will save you so much time. It's really um, reading emails and replying to emails can take up more time than you need to. So understanding which emails are important to reply immediately and which ones can wait till a different time, which you will allocate, uh, is, is going to save you a lot of time. Um, usually when I start a new job at a studio, uh, the first two days is basically tutorials or, you know, getting uh, familiar with the, with the content that you are going to be working on. The first thing I do is I sit down and, uh, I ask my supervisor, who's the people I, who are the people I need to, to respond to the emails immediately, which people I should look out for, and which emails should I, sh you know, don't care. Because uh, especially if you're working with software like Shotgun, which is a project management uh, software for visual effects, um, if you don't, you will get messages from this software every 10 seconds. It's, it's insane. So if, if you can shove it into a place where it won't bother you, all, all great. Does that help? I guess so. Do I have anything else? All right. Um, yeah, so again, back to uh, the last one, which is, uh, what's the time anyway? Ooh, it's 11.7, okay, every good time. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. So um, uh, self-employed. So uh, for self-employed, uh, I mean, you got all the problems in the world because, uh, firstly, you, you need to deal with uh, the project and the client. If you have more than one project that you're working on, um, you got to deal with those projects. Um, and it goes back down to the to the four principles I. I Wrote. It's the scope, the resources, the skills, and how you deal with them. So uh, when I work on my own personal, uh, not personal, when I work as a freelance artist, I use all of these guys. 
uh, just because otherwise I lose track. And as uh, those of you who are project managers or have, um, have dealt with it, these tools are great. So um, stuff I always struggle with, uh, setting smart goals, uh, uh, distractions as usual, uh, task importance, uh, dealing with uh, 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 delegating tasks, uh, saying no, and project uh, checkpoints. Um, all right, so, um, so setting smart goals. Um, I mean, this is one of the principles that the taught was, is uh, the first thing is kind of to, to understand uh, when a client comes to you with a project is to understand if that project that you are taking on yourself is attainable of you doing it by yourself and by setting a goal that is attainable. Um, and of course, this comes most of the time from experience, but you could pretty much assess uh, a task by um, by its complexity. Uh, and this is where the scope comes in and setting smart goals, you know, understanding the scope of a project will help you. Um, so I gave a, a, over here, I gave uh, an example of, you know, designing and building a chair. Gonna scroll back down. So um, to set the smart goals here, what you would do is saying, okay, I got to design a chair. Can I design a chair? What's my experience? I'm a designer. I'm a, I'm a you know product designer. Okay, this is not a big issue for me. Uh, the design part, I could you know I I know the steps I need for the design goal, so I can meet this goal. Uh, then it's the um, getting all of the products. Let's say I have to now build the chair. What am I building? The, the materials I need. Um, setting the goal for getting the materials you need is another goal and so on and so forth. Uh, even putting the chair together and painting it and turning it over, these are all goals that you need to see if they are attainable. Make sense, I hope. Uh, distractions, we talked about, it's the same distractions. I find myself, I found myself uh, d being distracted a lot easier when I'm a self-employed than in a, in a, structured environment and it's like 20 times worse when you when you're not in an instruct in, in, <coughs> excuse me let me just drink structured environment so um you know i would click on a youtube video because i say oh i got like 25 minutes to read my emails and watch a video 45 minutes later i've watched more videos and read one email you know so make sure that doesn't happen you know if you if you want time to watch videos on youtube you know put a timer down and say i'm done when this timer rings because again youtube facebook all of these uh platforms are there to suck you in deeper uh, because that's how they make their money uh past importance we talked about uh de delegating tasks um this is important as a self-employed because if you need to delegate out the tasks, it means that's money that you are not making personally. That's money that you're paying somebody else. So this will be more about um, when you do your initial quote to your um, to the to your employer. Um, if you realize that you don't know how to use any of the machines to make part of the chair and you need to bring in a professional to do it, and a professional cost so-and-so money, um, this is where you need to, to know that you need to ta delegate out these tasks. So the earlier you sit and do your project management and understand the immensity of the task, the better you'll be able to um, uh, figure out how much money you, you need to ask from the person who wants you to do the design or whatever.
uh, yeah, that's, I should look that one up. That looks, that app looks pretty cool. I will, I will definitely dig into it. <coughs> Thank you. Um, uh, and project checkpoints. Uh, I kind of mentioned it before. Project checkpoints is basically when you have, um, uh, when you're working on a project, is the, the point in the project where if you don't make that deadline, you are now going to lose money. Why? Because uh, the longer your project's going to take, um, the client is going to get angry for one, because you're not going to make the deadline. Or if there's no like proper deadline for it, uh, and you had an initial deadline, that means that every day past that deadline, you, you are losing money because you gave them an initial quote. So having checkpoints where the client signs off on that point helps you in two ways. One, that once that there's a sign off, the client can't come back and say, oh, I don't like this, go back. Because if they do, you can say, hey, you signed off on this, I'm gonna have to charge you extra money because I now have to push all, all of the production downstream. All right, so here, understanding your checkpoints uh, will really help you. Uh, okay. Um, saying no is also something that's very important. Um, you can say no to a client. It's, it's a good thing to do. Um, just saying yes because you want the job and then realizing that you can't um, deliver is going to reflect badly on you. So the more you're honest with your client, and even if they um, come to you with a request that was not quoted, and they say, oh, but you said you can do it. If you didn't quote money for it and it's not in your contract, you can say, no, I'm not doing it, or pay me more money. Uh, I hope that's helpful. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Unless you guys want to know more. All right, so the next thing I got is different uh, techniques that you can use to figure out time management. Uh, this is from that website. So if you guys want to go look it up and read more about it, uh, there is more in the website. This is just a summary. Uh, a lot of it's just copy and paste, but I thought I'd bring it up because this is stuff I use on a, on a regular basis and I thought it can help you. And if you have questions, I will try to answer them the best I can. Uh, so, uh, the Eisenhower matrix. Uh, this is a good way to basically decide which task is the more important tasks and which ones you can uh, do um, uh, do first, second, and end. This is more about um, understanding your tasks and have it making good, uh, setting smart goals and, and improving uh, deadlines and so on. Um, so as you can see, there's uh, four quadrants. Uh, each quadrant you will put, you, you just do this with sticky notes, it will be very useful. I think there's at least, I think uh, one of the systems that they show you, uh, CDM is SWOT, it's pretty much similar to that, um, except for tasks. So the way that this works is basically you put, once you look at, you make a list of all your tasks, and uh, in the first, uh, in the green column, you just put all the most important tasks that need to be done right away. Um, and the blue one, you put the important tasks that can wait, uh, that don't need to be done right away, but they can wait. At the bottom, in the yellow or, or orange uh, square at the bottom, um, tasks that are not so important, but can be delegated out to someone else if you don't have time to do them, and tasks that would be nice, but you should avoid them at all costs. So this could be good for project management and can be good for uh, task, uh, task management. Any questions? Absolutely quiet. All right, let's go. Um, 
This one is uh, um, one of my favorite uh, techniques. I've been using this since I was about 15. Oh, here we're getting some uh, questions. Four quadrant methodology, yeah. All right, cool. Um, this is uh, the one that I've used since I was 15, um, mainly to uh, to fight my um, my uh, ADHD and um, and just you know keep focus. And once you've turned off everything, and now you need to stay focused uh, by having uh, intervals of 25 minutes of working on a task. Um, it will keep you really, really focused into what you're doing. So in your calendar or um, you set out, okay, I need to in the next hour work on said task, you set a timer for your, um, for the task for 25 minutes at a time with a five minute break in the middle. So what you will have is two breaks in an hour, more or less, and then uh, 25 minutes that you are working solely on the task and not doing anything else. And once you have that timer going, it's, it's going to help you focus. Um, yes, it is awesome. So uh, if you are struggling to concentrate or struggling to work on really boring tasks, this will help. Uh, I've had my students do this uh, when they were struggling and they all came back and said, hey, okay, this is great. Um, this is another uh, task management um, step, um, uh, more like a project management step. Um, basically, uh, capture means that you will just uh, sit down and write all the tasks you need, process is um, which one's the most important, uh, organize, uh, when are you going to do them, and then uh, reflect every start actually working on it. And then after a while, what you want to do is stop and see uh, which tasks you need to go back, which tasks you're going to reschedule and which tasks you can um, are done basically. And of course done. So it's, it's a, it's another good method of how to even get started. This actually should have been at the top, but yeah, I thought I'll start off with the, with the, by the being, Stuff. So yeah, this is basically how to how to assess a, a project. Uh, Kabam is basically Trello and and a sprint board. Um, uh, block out the the tasks you need, uh, and you do um, um, these several steps here. If you guys want to know more, um, yeah. There's nothing much I can add on this. It's, it's basically a sprint board, but it's something that we do on a regular basis. And I think, all right. And of course the last, is this the last one? Yeah, the last one <clears throat> is uh, inbox zero. Um, this is, uh, goes back to what I was talking about um, with uh, your email. Um, your email assignments. And uh, this is just a good way to kind of move things around and, and sort out your folders. And uh, again, you can make it personalize it more than this, but this is the bare, the bare bones of what you need to do. I'll leave it on the screen for another minute or two. Um, if you guys want to ask me questions, I know we, we got still almost more than a half an hour to go. If you guys want me to talk about certain other things, we can do that and we can do it through the chat. So we don't have, I mean, we can talk to each other, not just type. Um, there is one more thing I want to talk about before I move on, before we go into Q and A, if you guys want to, is the one thing I didn't talk about um, is the, in a, an employee is the work a healthy uh, work, um, personal life and your work life. I didn't talk about that. If you guys are interested, I would love to talk about it, but 
Uh, I'm pretty much opening the floor for anybody to ask questions or let me dive into another thing. So off we go. All right. Dennis. So uh, um, again, I'll do a hosting apology for everyone. So I did uh, select you have the ability to unmute yourselves now um, by default. I'd had that there before, but for whatever reason, it was unclicked uh, that you weren't unable, you were unable to unmute yourselves, but now you should be able to unmute yourselves. Um, and yeah, to Damon's point, if there's any um, questions, you know, related to the presentation or otherwise, I mean, Damon's a, an alum now who's uh, been out there doing his thing. Um, good time to have the Q&A session going. Chat works. And actually, we got one right out of the gate with, can you talk more about the work-life balance? I mean, yeah. you already mentioned you went through the program having a spouse, your wife at home and, you know, work, you know, how do you, how do you manage the work-life balance? All right. So let's start off with the bachelors. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, for the bachelors of you, uh, that are out here and are now at school and some and of you are with, and bachelorettes, yeah, Thank you. for, for all genders out there, um, it comes down to two things in the classroom, in the class, in, in the school environment, it comes down to the buy-in thing that I was talking about earlier. Um, it is important to go out and to have that time with your friends and to wind down from schoolwork. Um, but um, it's in very, very important to realize that it's a short time that you are at the CDM. It's just, what, a year, not even. And as healthy as it is to go out um, and enjoy yourself, uh, keep it down to a minimum. I mean, maximum, let's say once a week. That's what I would suggest. And the reason is that the minute that you let um, the social thing take over, um, it starts to rub people the wrong way. And it will um, definitely affect your timekeeping skills. Um, I've had a situation in the CDM where one of the alumni was a party animal and it really affected their work. It really affected their work where they would come in hungover or sleepy or they wouldn't turn their work in time or, and it really was a, an unpleasant, unpleasant thing for everyone. And, and there's nothing really you can do other than say, hey, this is not cool, but you are all grown ups, So I, and, and you are going to go into the real world eventually. And the connections that you make at the CDM, the people, your alumni, are also the people who are going to, you know, give you a leg up when you need one. So if you piss them off or rub them the wrong way, it's going to bite you in the ass later. So always keep that in, in mind. Um, I'm not saying don't go out. I mean... It's important to get to know the city you are in, um, going up to meetups or going out to, you know, just to unwind is, is a very welcome thing. It, it's, it's a healthy thing, but it's got to be measured. Um, yeah. It's a good point, Damon. And again, like, I mean, to the benefit of everyone on the call, I mean, the time that you spend, it's an intensive period of time in this Masters of Digital Media program and the, the time and effort you put in, super critical. And but the connections, I mean, beyond the, the, the degree that, that you'll re hopefully receive if you successfully make your way through this, the network that you're going to have with your peers in your class, obviously the faculty and staff that get to know you too, that's all part of your network. And then the greater alumni network, those impressions are super important. I mean, finding the time to have life outside of the MDM, like of, of, of the core classes. I mean, you're actually doing this right now. I'll give you credit because this is this workshop with Damon. It's kind of an extra, right? So those of you that are here, I mean, you know, you're taking on these extra opportunities. And I think the greater experience you can have around the program, the things you can do with some of your classmates, you can also attach it to some of your professional development interests. So whether it's getting involved in some of the, the meetups or the uh, festivals that happen, there's a lot of cultural shared experiences you can have with your peers. Um, but yeah, finding that balance, super important. I mean, these are unique times right now too, and personal time to recharge, especially for us introverted types is important too. Um, but yeah, the, you know, you want to impress your, 
your team, your class, your, 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 your faculty, um, and make the most of that. But, um, that was a good question. And it's, but it's a, and again, I think some of the things you touched on Damon are super important that being on time, I mean, that not only shows respect to the rest of your team and moves the production along or not having to duplicate messaging because people aren't showing up, you know, making that point of, if you can be there a few minutes early, um, that's, uh, I had a few, you know, that's one of my networking pro tips too. If you're in there early, you can get to the food before everyone else has touched it, which has always been my germaphobe nature anyway, which <laughs> <laughs> paying off now in, a, in an extra way. But then you get to be seen, make the rounds, um, and then introductions to other people become so much easier because you've met, met everyone. But I think half the battle is just showing up and, and being where, you know, figuring out your messaging, your tools that you use. I'm an email user, so if people aren't reading their email as a boss, like, you know, you got to read, you know, for where, where you got to meet, <laughs> you got to meet your employer where they're at. If, if there's certain tools that they decide that this is what we're using for this production or for communicating things, you got to be on top of it. Anyway, I'm going to dip out because it's about you, not me, but I was just yeah. nodding along. No, those are important points and I'm glad that you, you've uh, highlighted those. Um, yeah. So, uh, and that's, you know, that's for, for the bachelors out there. Um, I, I was married when you know, was I'm still married <laughs> um, when when I went to the to the CDM and again it, it it's a difficult thing because you gotta you, you gotta balance uh, the time with your family as well as schoolwork um, but if you allocate time and you let your teammates know about it. Um, it makes your life easier and makes their life easier and, and the expectations they have also uh, adjust. Um, I have a, a very good friend who went to VFS and he has a kid um, and um, his problem was that he needed to take care of his, you know, get home, help his wife with the kid. Um, and after a certain hour, you know, by the time his kid's asleep, it's nine o'clock at night. And only then he could sit down and do his, his, his tasks, right? Um, but his teammates on his game design course um, couldn't understand that. They expected him to be, you know, 100% into the, into the project. But he could only give, you know, 85% because the, the, the rest of the percentage is going to his family, his responsibilities outside. So um, if you do have a structured time and knowing like what your limitations are and conveying that, again, this is down to communication, conveying that to, to your teammates and they know what, you know, what um, time elements you are dealing with, then the tasks that are tasked to you will be appropriate, the, the amount of pressure you're under will be appropriate and expectations of you will be appropriate. Um, and if you don't convey that and you're like, oh, I could do everything and I'll, you know, I'll be a hundred percent in and then you only give 85%, that will just piss people off. It's not, it's not worth it. That's good points. I mean, the idea of communicating sort of core hours or when you can actually collaborate, it's important. And again, even pre COVID, the program had experienced this because some of our industry um, projects that we'd had in the past had clients abroad. Like we did a project with Sony Japan and, Larry was supervising on that one and that too. So a lot of the meetings would happen later, again, respecting the time, time zones. And it's, but everyone sort of came together to be aware of what the constraints were and you know, needs for different parties and came up with a plan that everyone had bought in on that you know, this is when we have meetings or this is when you know, we're gonna be able to respond to certain things. Well, as long as everyone- I had, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I had an experience at the CDM where um, one of my teammates, wasn't very good at separating their personal life and the, their time uh, working on a project. And a good example of this was um, our um, client was, this, was the CDM. We, we were working on um, evolution of games and one of the teachers was the client. Now, this is all, all great because we have a little more leeway, but what happened was that that day I let everybody know I couldn't be there. And the person who was replacing me um, was supposed to be at the meeting with the client, taking notes and uh, getting feedback. But it was also a year of FIFA. 
big football game. Uh, I think it was the final. Um, that person didn't turn up to the, to the meeting until much later, pissing off the client. I got a phone call just before an interview that I had from the client saying, where are you guys? Why aren't you here? And, you know, this caused a, a cascade of anger all around because this person who was responsible to be at the meeting um, brushed, brushed the client off, brushed the team off to go do something personal. And you guys don't want to be in a situation like that. Believe me, it was a very stressful day for the entire team because it's basically, it's almost a, a, uh, akin to an entire failure of a project because anywhere else the fire would um, the client would fire us on the spot so that's that's a good example of of things not to do um, any more questions in that regard Let's see what what else do I want to say um I have a question yeah. this is Mary um, Hi, Mary so if Damon, for you've got all these like great like tips and tricks and like tools to use for being productive with your time. Is there anything that you're still struggling with, and like how are you kind of navigating that? <laughs> My time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, all these tools and tips and tricks. I mean, they're helpful, but it's at the end of the day, it's up to you um, to to realize when when you um, when you are going down that rabbit hole. Um, just getting ready for this uh, presentation, I found myself many a day um, going, going down the YouTube rabbit hole. And the, the biggest advice I can give you is just turn off all multimedia when you, when you sit to do your homework or tasks that are important. Um, set time for doing all of that multimedia stuff aside. That's, again, it's, it's the only thing I can really recommend. It will also help those who procrastinate solve the procrastination. And, and my tip for procrastination is, um, is the same tip my, my aunt gave me many, many years ago. She said, if you can do it right now, do it, because later on you'll just be stressed or you'll forget, and then you'll be stressed some more. So just, if you, have, if you get homework, do it the same day. I think it's done. You don't need to worry about it anymore. Um, leaving stuff to the last minute will just uh, put you into, like pressure. So, yeah. So th these are just my thoughts on, the, on that. And I hope I answered your question, Mary. You have. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? I'm going to put one to you, which because I, I think I alluded to this earlier in the call, and it was connected to Sausage Party. Um, but uh, the idea where um, working in visual effects or post, you may work on you know, multiple shows with multiple employers. It's the nature of the industry where it's, uh, you have productions and there's layoffs and there's another, another gig that comes up. But um, well, how, how do you approach working in this industry, which is somewhat fickle in the sense that you, you, know, you have to, you know, I always applaud people that do work in, in the film and visual effects industry because I mean, for everyone on the call, it may sound very sexy to be working on all these, you know, feature films or things that, but the, the reality behind the scenes, you know, the, uh, the meat grinder as it would be if I'm going the, the sausage party route. Um, what's, the, what's, what's the highs and the lows of the industry to everyone that's on this call? And how do you manage that? Again, thinking about your life. All right, your so the number one issue that, I, that this industry has is um, as an artist, uh, you're in contract. That means that you are, you are all working or you're looking for work. Um, which can be very stressful. So the time that in between work, you better be doing something with yourself. I usually, what I do when I'm looking for work, and usually it's between a three to six to six months that you are out of work, I'm usually learning a new software or homing in a skill that I've been working on or chasing down a passion. Um, that's just to keep your sanity. Um, and that's, that's the hardest thing I think is just, to, is that, um, hunting after work, um, for that, my biggest 
uh, advice that I could give you is learn how to write a good cover letter. Um, I have at least four or five sites that I go to to relearn how to write cover letters and how to, how to get that work. It doesn't always work for me, but at least do that. Um, do follow-up emails. Uh, it really helps to get whoever interviewed you to remember who you are. Um, that is, a, is a, I think, one of my biggest tips that I can give you is follow-up emails. Uh, after an interview, after, after sending in your resume and getting an answer from a person, not a bot, um, or reaching out and connecting to somebody in a, in a, um, in a, I don't know, let's say you, you meet somebody in a meetup or in one of these, um, um, come on, what's it called? Um, events and just sending, writing down their name, where they work, who they are, and then sending a follow-up email uh, saying, hey, we talked about so-and-so and it was nice meeting you. I hope you keep me in mind if there's a job opening, I've applied for so-and-so. Uh, it does help a lot. Um, your personal connections, even with people in the industry, um, help, but not as much as the other two. I mean, what it helps is when you apply to a job in a place and they ask for references, then they'll go and say, hey, have you worked with this person before? Have you studied with this person? Oh, yeah, he's an awesome guy. He, he you know, it's fun to work with and and uh, and so on. Um, for interviews, which is another another thing that you need to keep in mind, uh, depends on the type of interview you have. I found there's two types: there's the one-on-one -on -one interview and the the group interview. The one-on-ones are better because you can be more personal and they're less stressful. Um, just be yourself. Be somebody that they would want to hire and. Try be memorable, but be honest. Uh, a lot of prep helps, like learning about the company and what uh, what the company's interested in. That really helps. So that's that part of the of the industry is you know the, the job search. I hope those are good tips. I'm sure I can think of more if you guys ask specific questions. When I'm in at work, <clears throat> uh, the things that I I struggle with and um, and that I like um, is firstly you get to meet a lot of professionals with a lot of knowledge, and the more you collaborate with them and the more you share with them and they share with you, it's a it's amazing, it's amazing. That's but mainly the reason I, I moved to Vancouver because I was tired of being a, a freelance artist. I just wanted to work in a company with other professionals and learn. Um, the thing I struggle with a lot is that I'm, I'm kind of a curious George and I like to ask a lot of questions, which can be annoying. And I've had, I've had situations where my personality would clash with another personality and that's even cost me a job um, it's learn to monetize your behavior and, and interpersonal connections with people at work. Um, and just be, be brave. I mean, if, if somebody's rubbing you the wrong way, uh, confront them, but in a, in a, in a good way. Uh, go to your supervisor if you're feeling that, that you are having trouble with somebody at work. Um, just communicating, because um, then what they will do is they'll sit down with you and, and try help you figure out how to communicate better and, and get this tension out of the room, because it's not healthy for anybody in the room. On my last job, I had um, I, I worked with a guy who um, his social skills were very limited, um, brilliant person, wonderful person, 
but we had the worst time communicating. Um, and, it, and, it, and it turns out, it, it gets really frustrating, especially if it's a person that you need their help and you can't communicate with them. And then you find yourself feeling that you all, you're on your own to solve a problem. That's a terrible feeling and I don't recommend it. So being as honest as you can and being as open and trying to realize when you're having those issues as early as possible so you can solve them is, is, is the best tip I can give you. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, and I mean, that is great advice. And again, and it's sort of where the soft skills that the MDM sort of places in people, the empathy, the, the ability and the awareness that, you know, these, you can have the most talented person in the world working next to you, but if you're not working in, the, in a collaborative and effective way, it, it, it actually loses the production's value because it's like you're not getting the best of your people. It creates a, a negative environment. So the quicker you can get to resolving things, the better. And understanding you can take steps to resolve communication challenges, that's a huge part of, you know. Yeah, and the I earlier guess, you becoming, recognize that you have that problem, it, it's, it's yeah. best. Well, and, and, and that's the thing, it, it can be, sometimes it's personality clashes, sometimes it's like one person's persona. If you find effective ways to work together or actually at least take steps to, to, to try to resolve to the best of your abilities, that's, that's what you need and should be doing, right? Um, and, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, those are good points to bring up. I mean, the one thing, I mean, I, we're, I know we're coming up on, on the hour and I think people probably need the bathroom break or, you know, prep for other things and that too. But, you know, so you, obviously you came into the program, you know, as an artist and wanting to, to, to learn from other people, um, you know, what are, you know, what is the, you know, what are the, the highlights, I guess, of taking this career path for you as an artist who relocated to Vancouver to work on these productions? Is it, uh, you know, what, what, what drew you to it or keeps you still working in this industry? What's, what's the thing that makes you passionate about what you do? It's always the hardest question. Um, cause, because it I'm, I'm what they call a CG generalist. That means I, mm -hmm. I'm curious about everything, and, but I never learn anything all the way through uh, because there's just too much to know. Um, but what it does, it opens a lot of doors to other aspects of the career. So when I moved here, I was, you know, I did a lot of animation and modeling, a little bit of rigging, but the first job I landed was in what they call shop finally, uh, which basically what it is, is just cleanup. But I find myself doing, you know, cloth and hair simulation, which is something I never did before, but that's what they needed. So I sat there and learned. And then I was lucky enough to have one of the people who wrote the tool for Maya be my boss. Now, <laughs> And this is one of the cases where we had like a, um, I had a clash with her because personalities, like we both very passionate people and we get very excited about things. So we always seemed like we were fighting, but we were talking. So <laughs> like, why are you guys fighting? We're not fighting, we're talking. And like we both answered at the same time. Mm. But um, when you have that access to that kind of knowledge, um, and how they thought about how the tool is, it's, it's an amazing feeling, especially when you yeah. figure it out. And well, I, I was gonna mention, I guess, what's rewarding to one person is different for another. And I mean, you yeah. sort of lean into this jack of all trades, master of some, I'll say, like yeah. not, I don't believe in the none, but I think mm. wanting to learn all these different things or, you know, again, that excitement about learning, you know, working with the person that developed the tool, right? It's yeah. uh, that curiosity and being a curious George type person that that's, yeah. You know, I think this industry is full of it, and like in, in that sense that you have a chance to learn all these different things or the tools keep evolving. And yeah, I mean, I get it. It's a, I have a lot of friends working in the industry, but I wanted to ask you, yeah, what was your, you know, that, that was the big draw. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have any uh, question for Damon? Because I think we're, we're closing in on, on the closing, but uh, if um, you're free to either go on mic or if you're at the, the end of your, your early stage Zoom fatigue, you can also just uh, drop a wave or a thank you and we can, we can go from there. But uh, so I'll probably end up doing that because I'm about to end the, the recording, um, Damon, but um, um, oh, we got it. Hi. 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 It's Rosa here again. Hi, Rosa. Um, 
Um, I actually was interested because you offered to kind of show how Monday works. And like I've seen the interface and everything, but I've never actually used it. So uh, I I was just wondering if you could, I don't know, delve into it a little bit. Um, okay. It's, again, I'm also new to that. I haven't <laughs> used it in a uh, but um, here you could see. So basically the way that Monday works, you get these uh, um, basically, you have a project and you can break it up into the into the tasks uh, where they are. And of course, you can make as many of these um, um, to do lists as you need. Uh, like I have completed here. This is like all the stuff I needed to do to to make this presentation, as mm -hmm. well as the lecture. Uh, and then you have like a due date. So if I click here, it will give me a due date, and you can actually put in a time. But it's, it's cool because you can have this connected to Trello, which if you have a Trello board, it will, yep. it will update here. Uh, you could also create a priority that say, oh, this is a high priority. So that will go into high priority. And then we just put that into, oh, it's now in progress. And I can do stuff like that. I could also uh, add filters, add people. There's also a way to show the calendar. Why can't I remember where that's at? Default. Mm -hmm. oh, there we go. We got a tables, timeline. So you could see an actual timeline. So right. let's say you have several people working on, on let's say, a project or uh, several aspects of a task. You can you can manage uh, to see where they are in the tasks. Um, okay. Pretty easy, and you can drag tasks around. You know when they do. If you need to move it. it it's a pretty straightforward software. It's not too complex. Uh, it's not like using um, something like Shotgun. Shotgun yeah. where, where, <laughs> where it's the same thing, but it's like you got a billion things and you have to build pages and then the whole, this is, yeah. you know, just bare bones and it will give you what you need to get it done. Um, sadly, yeah, so I wish Autodesk would make Shotgun more accessible to artists. I think yeah, that was going to be my follow-up question because I'm interested in producing in animation and uh, uh, I've been looking at Shotgun. So I was going to ask you, as someone who I assume uses regularly, what is your experience with the software? Um, so as an artist, it really depends on the, the production person who's in charge of the, of the Shotgun page. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the studio, how, they're in, how they integrate Shotgun into uh, their pipeline. Um, Shotgun is really, really powerful because um, it keeps track of everything. It could keep yeah. track of not only the tasks done by the, by the person who the task is allocated to, but also um, whatever uh, uh, product that person has created, it can keep track of that as well. So where it is, uh, what stage it's done, um, if it's an asset that can be reused, then you know it's it it will mm -hmm. set it in a library and you can call it up and and the artist can call it up whenever they need. Uh, it also helps when um, you're trying to uh, get feedback from a client. Um, you can put videos and and uh, annotations and it's yep. it's, uh, it's really robust. It isn't very user friendly. Okay. It <laughs> it, it it takes a, a little bit of learning you can make it user friendly once you learn how the filters work. Okay. So here too, you got filters and you can you know, filter out different things. Okay. Um, in Shotgun, if this is all the filters they got here and I'm sure you can make more, but in Shotgun, it's, it's a, a mile long list of filters that you can put in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Shotgun, okay. is, Shotgun is the diggity dank once you get it to work properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, well. All right. So on that note, Damon, I think we're going to um, get into the, the closing here. So I'm going to give you my first uh, virtual applause here to go with my actual one. So I'm going to say thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Call's going to be ended, everyone. Um, thanks to everyone who shows up and takes all this in. And um, that's half the battle, showing up, showing up on time, as we've noted. Damon, thanks again so much. Uh, really, really appreciate it. And, you know, yeah, there's, there's oh, a lot. My pleasure. All right, my uh, pleasure. I got over my jitters, thanks, so I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're past the jitters now. It's been, you know, it's it's nice. And again, this is, um, you know, you're you're with a, a group of 
peers here. Everyone's, you know, connected in the MDM and, you know, at different stages of their life careers and trying to figure out where, where they're going with it. Your advice was super uh, appreciated. And uh, again, thanks everyone. I'm going to end the call here. Yeah. And if you guys need more advice, don't be shy. Uh, look me up at LinkedIn and say, hi, I'm from CDM. I, I looked at your thing and good advice. And I'll try answer. Yeah. And now I'll try and answer and help you. All right. Thanks everyone. Thanks, David. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.